now for something completely different, as it is put so nicely. Where do computers go when they are old and tired? They go into the big computer heaven and, well, no, not here. Here they are uh, polished and made nice again and loved and cleaned and will be brought to a new purpose. And Lucas and Daniel are with me today and will tell you how they are doing that. The stage is yours. Yes, thank you very much. And welcome to our talk. Hey, old men, old computers for young people. I am Daniel and I am running a local initiative in Solingen. And I am Lukas. I am from Brunswick, where all of this started last year. And we will tell you about this program, Hey Old Men, Old Computers for Young People. And uh, this is an initiative that started in the beginning of the lockdown last year, which collects computers from, from private persons and gives them out to all of the com kids that couldn't participate in remote education. So that started sometime last year and it started with a phone call. One of our founders, Moritz, called another founder, Martin. Hey, I know a teacher who needs a couple of computers for her students. And Martin said, yeah, sure. We, they are lying around everywhere. And so it came that the two of them thought, hey, that, that's not just the case with us, that is uh, also the case with other people. Many companies change them every th three years, and all of these computers we could collect and give to students. And then the whole thing started in Brunswick. Now we have collected a lot of computers in Brunswick and we also could find other people in other towns that recreated this. And now we want to show you how you can do this as a local initiative and also how we managed to bring this from Brunswick to all of Germany. And now it's Daniel's turn. Thanks. So let's show us the first slide. There we go. So what what is the problem? What's the problem we're trying to solve? So 2019, remote schooling was not really imaginable. People would have laughed at us if we told them that in 2020, all students in Germany would participate in at home and uh, do school from at home from home. And now fast forward to 2020 and distance education for all students in Germany. And But not everybody has a computer and not everyone can afford one. So there we come to the question of uh, how this is socially acceptable. And there was no support for students that could not afford a computer, even though they were forced to participate in the education from at home. And only after about a year of, of the pandemic in 2021, there were the first um, cases and decision, court decisions where at least the kids of uh, people that receive social security um, are assigned a, a bit of money to buy some sort of digital device to participate. But again, this is only for people that are receiving social benefits. And this one, this only started after a year of the pandemic. There, there was no support before that and the students were left hanging. So one could, of course, uh, get mad about this, which is probably fair, or you just start doing something about it. And that is what Martin and Moritz did in Brunswick. And we in Soling did the same thing afterwards. So, and what, what you need to do this is what I want to show you. So can I have the next slide, please? All right. So what are we doing? We, we are taking the initiative. What do we need to, to found a local initiative? We need a team. So 
This is our team in Stuttgart. Then you need people that that care about this topic, that are willing to put time into this topic, and that are also very much bothered by the issue at hand. The fact that kids are trying to participate on small, broken smartphone displays. And then, of course, you need some space to work and to store. Now, not everybody has what we have here, a big hall at their disposal and a lot of space. Uh, for the start, it is enough to just have an office room or a storage room just to get started. And the third thing that you need is nerds or techies that are capable of using and uh, polishing these devices. People that have some technical knowledge and know how to do a Ubuntu installation from a USB stick, for example. But I think among the listeners of this talk, that is probably the smaller problem. Then the next thing that is extremely important if one wants to do this is partners. So you need uh, companies that are well networked in your local economy. Uh, you need uh, system houses, so many computers only can give out uh, computers if they receive a reliable proof of deletion of hard drives, which is something that system houses can do. And um, if some of them may be uh, engaged, uh, may be excited and willing to do this for you, maybe even for free, can, then that means that you can receive donations from companies that have this requirement. And then the, the next thing would be a non-profit uh, organizations and NGOs that um, might be able to help you, especially when maybe one is looking for sp certain special parts that you can't find anymore. For example, one w one was using uh, using up all of their power cords, which they, they needed. And at some point, one, one has to buy some of these. And uh, then maybe some nonprofits can donate money to you and pay some of those bills. Now, if we have all that, then we can get started. So we collect the first donations. And if everything is going well, that looks something like that. So you can see mountains and mountains of computers here. So these photos are from uh, some local initiative in Svechte, I think. So Especially important is, if you're collecting donations, try to have some central disposal point where people can bring them. So, if because if you want to go to every single individual donation, um, going to, to every grandma that has a computer to give up, that takes ages. And uh, while even when, when people can come to you to give them, that saves a lot of time. And then if one is there, one has collected some big donations, maybe one, one drove to some company that had a lot of computers to give for bigger donations, you can do that. Then you have this mountain of computers and my first thought was, oh my god, what, what if we won't get rid of these? And then the next thought was, wow all of these computers would probably have ended up in the trash bin. All of these really still very usable work devices. So there was one company that gave us quad-core i5 computers with 8 gigs of RAM. Those would have gone to the trash. And at that point, in, in the sense of sustainability, that is probably not the way we should treat with treat the resources of this planet. And if these computers are supposed to be uh, thrown away and in the next, next house over there are people who really need them, then that doesn't really make sense from a social standpoint. Something has to happen there. So we started doing something. 
and uh, collected all of these towers. And once you have all of these towers there, you have to somewhat polish them in order to bring them to the next purpose. And what that can look like is what you can see on the next slide. Oh, I'm sorry. Before that, we have one other slide. So not all things that are donated are actually usable. So here are, there are some um, lowest lowest common denominator for what, what needs to be there, which we said was four gigabytes RAM and two cores with at least two gigahertz. And of course, please, no trash. Some we, we received some weird things. So CDs left in, in CD-ROM drives is a thing that happened a lot. So in our installation script, there's a statement now that just ejects all drives just to see if there's still a CD left in there. Um, all right. And then once you have usable devices, you can give them a dust down and refurbish them. Sometimes they really have a big pelt of dust. Maybe you can see this on the stream. We see how one of our colleagues from Brunswick is using a compressor to just blow air through the computer so that the computer doesn't die from heat soon, which was probably near in this case. Also, you also take a, a wet rug to it, and they, all of these things are also things that non-nerds can do. A lot of people asked us that, that wanted to help, uh, that, that asked like what they can do, and like cleaning devices is the thing that absolutely everyone can do. And there are also a lot of other things that you'll see where people that aren't necessarily technical can still help. All right, one next picture, please. All right, so once they're clean, they receive a Linux image, which is Ubuntu in our case, because that is just a very common thing. And one can very surely um, um, find support for it One, if there are problems that arise. We built our own image, which uh, we have a aut an automated GitLab image, CI image for. Um, the installation is completely automatized, so we only have to plug in the USB stick and boot from it, and the rest is largely uh, happens on its own. And then in the end, we also take some tests and check if everything works. For example, laptops on on uh, webcams on laptops and drives and uh, whether the browser starts properly and so on. Also, we install a lot of software that the users may need. So yeah, that's one, all of the things that are used in schools these days. So we have these computers and we refurbish them. And now, we have to see where are these computers supposed to go. So we are collecting the needs, and that's why we just talk to schools. So we have a document uh, package here, which is something that we also offer to all of the initiatives. Um, one of them is a, a letter to schools, which lists whatever we're doing and why. Also, a, a requirement list, which is something uh, a way that the school can tell us what their requirement is, which in the end is just a number, which is like maybe we have we need 10, 12, 50 computers, something in that frame. And the third thing is an FAQ, which because like a long let email is probably not going to be read, so that document lists a couple further info for other schools. So yeah, so the schools and maybe some often the, the teachers know the students and know whether they have devices at home or can probably collect that info quite quickly. But after one year of pandemic, most teachers know how their students are working and who has a proper device and who doesn't. 
for example, when they know this kid also always has like its nose very close to the camera, then they, he's probably using a smartphone. And yeah, so um, especially people without um, their own device, but also families that maybe have multiple children but not enough devices. And for example, uh, here in Soling, we, we had a survey for lots of students and a lot of people um, entered that, yeah, we have a tablet but this, and the student can use it. But it turned out that, yeah, the, the tablet is Android 5, you can't install Microsoft Teams on it anymore. And then that doesn't work out and it, then like the, the whole planning stage for the survey didn't work out and or maybe the, the device broke in the period and um, maybe uh, yeah some, some other things didn't work out or maybe the, the parents need to work from at home and now need the device and then the students can't have it anymore. So there's a lot of things that can happen and have happened. All kinds of people came to us asking for hardware and we were happy to provide them. And of course, there are other reasons to support us. And uh, well, in the end, uh, the schools just contact us and we provide them as soon as we have the hardware ready. Now we've talked about the documents, but we have to get them distributed to the schools and we want all, to give all schools the opportunity to react at the same time. So what do we do? We write emails to the school. Mission accomplished. Done. All schools know what to do and we're just waiting for feedback. That is what we did and well. We didn't get much of a reaction. Of course, well, it takes schools some time to really assess the needs and ask the teachers, collect the information, report back. So we waited a little bit longer. And in the meantime, we also had some press after which one or two schools approached us and asked, wow, that is cool. You, you're surely completely overwhelmed by now. Do you maybe have one or two computers left? Of course we had. So we kept on waiting and still there was hardly any response and we couldn't imagine why. No, we had no idea. But students and parents contacted us uh, following the press we had and we asked what schools they were with and asked. And so that is what I did. And one conversation I summed it up here for you because it really stuck with me. I, I was like, hi, I'm from Hey Old Man, we're uh, collecting hardware for schools and the reaction was like, you, what? Who? No interest. But we want to help your students with free laptops. Silence. Okay, well, let me look for paper. Uh, I'll, just, I'll just write a note to the principal. And I did that two or three times. And this one sentence, we want to give away free laptops. That was the, um, is the catchphrase to get any principal listening. Yeah, so then we had the first schools who needed devices and then some months later we finally got a response to the initial email and i don't want to keep this sentence from you that we received and because it's very telling it says in the false belief that the offering to give um, free hardware to students was false, I just deleted your email. I thought it was spam, basically. So that was the human filter, the human spam filter we failed at. 
and I have the suspicion that this may have been the case for many schools. So what could we have done differently? Other forms of contact maybe? Yeah, you could um, call them directly, these um, principles, sometimes they're very open. Also, go to the press, that was very helpful for us and also for other organizations, because um, students and families and teachers and schools will come forward and contact you. Directly approaching teachers you may be acquainted with is also a good option. And just talking. Our email inbox exploded when there was a teacher conference, which we didn't know of, but that included principals that already had received devices from us. And as soon as they started talking to their colleagues about that, the whole thing really took off and we were able to give away a lot more hardware. So as soon as you have your initiative known, it works. So we've got the needs, we've got the devices, now we can start. This is what it looks like before delivery. We want to really give people quality devices. So we always deliver our devices with a nice tote bag and with a card and that is what it looks like in the picture I just showed you. So you get the monitor, mouse, keyboard, computer, tote bag. And we try to uh, give out hardware that is as new as possible, which isn't always doable, but we try. We try to make our hardware that we give out feel like a present. We don't just want to give out old stuff. We want to make it nice and beautiful. Because it's also about the subjective feeling that people get. We want to we want to have people feel included, feel welcomed, feel as if they get a present, something valuable. That is what we want to do. This is the feeling we want to evoke with our students. Okay, what we always include in um, deliveries is parents because we don't give the devices to the schools but actually to the students and their families. We don't give them to the schools as property and we don't give them to the students directly and we do, but we do kind of events where the computers are distributed. So that was a first impression for you of um, what we're doing. Here are a few pictures of the um, giving out distribution event in Solingen. That is an example of one city. And now our other speaker will tell you how this concept can be shared between cities and copy pasted. So I hope you've gotten a nice overview of what Hey Old Man is doing. And it quickly became clear to us that this problem is ubiquitous. It's not just present in Braun uh, Brunswick, but in all of Germany. For example, if you listen to the Hardware for Future talk yesterday, of course, there are also other similar initiatives in other cities. What we did was kind of create a brand, make it trendy, 
und make it gesagt, marketable. Das wollen wir noch mehr machen. Wir wollen nicht And we wanted to spread the concept. We wanted to give other people, such as Daniel, to be able to just copy the concept quickly and effortlessly. So we thought with all the experience that we have, that we could distribute it or share it online for free so that others can copy it as a social franchise. So we made a homepage, social media. We pulled through a consistent design. We compiled a manual, flyers, print materials and other templates. We wanted to share all of these materials to anyone who wanted to copy our concept. And of course, um, that also included a better version of our Ubuntu distribution. We have a GitLab CI pipeline, meanwhile, which is working really well for us. So we're always up to date. And this is, uh, well, we have it in Brunswick, we have it in Solingen. We're keeping on enhancing the concept and sharing it with people who like the idea and who want to continue the work. So data is great, images is great, design is great, but the most important thing is the network. More and more companies are realizing um, how valuable those initiatives are and getting in touch. And also it's very important to talk about issues that you encountered and how to resolve them and learn from each other. This is the good thing about networking, getting to know other initiatives as well all over Germany. And by sharing and copying the concept, we have the concept applicable now all over Germany in the cities, which you can see on the slide. And it would be really great if uh, people who are watching right now maybe would also like to do that in their own city. Because we think this initiative is not just about old computers, but it's also about social uh, things. And uh, we don't think that we have all the answers or we are the best, but that other people's, people can take the concept, enhance it, change it, so that in the end, it becomes better and we can spread it even further. So that almost takes me to the end. If you're thinking, wow, this looks like a good idea. If the initiative is already present in your city, you're welcome to drop by and see what the guys and gals are doing. And we always need helping hands. No matter how much experience you have or how much time you can give, anybody is welcome. And if we, if you don't have an initiative in your city, because of course there's a few white patches on the map still, we'll support you as best as we can to, so that you can found your own initiative in your city. Hey, ich habe von euch gelesen, ich will das auch machen. Am Donnerstag habe ich euch zu Our best case scenario is um, hearing from someone who says, I just learned of you. I, uh, I wrote you an email, you got back to me, and within the week I had the project running. This is what we strive for, and it's really worth it.
because we can really make positive change in people's lives. And it would be really great if that initiative could be spread further. And what we are also always looking for is laptops, PCs, monitors. So if you know companies who want to get rid of them, contact us. Also, if it's a large amount of devices or if it's just accessories, because we need those as well. And also, you can donate money to us. And also um, room space, like if you have storage space available that we could use, that would also be great. So that was our talk and our idea. So we hope that uh, this concept will apply. That's it for our talk. Thank you for being here. And now we have a Q&A. Oh, well, I'll give a big thanks. Yeah, that, that's a great thing. I think that's a really great thing. And I think you're super cool for, for doing that. <laughs> and um, it's, it's great to see. And uh, also the, the pad is really full of questions and we probably won't get through all of them. But Lucas and Daniel did say they will do a big blue button session right after this. And um, now in the pad at the very bottom, there will probably be an invite link to the big blue button session. So, um, we can ask some further questions. So I'll start with the first question. So how do you separate your initiative from other initiatives like the computer chest and others? Are you aware of the others? Yeah, I yeah, okay. So I'd say, personally, no, I didn't know them. Um, Daniel and I uh, listened to the Hardware for Futures and uh, yeah, heard that they basically have the same issues as we do. And we are in contact with them and will probably then also contact others. So yeah, we, we don't have the same brand to, uh, to say that that way, but yeah, we have the same goals so we can work together. I guess. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I, I muted and talked on. Um, so, um, there apparently was a branch that wanted to be founded in Recklinghausen, but here in uh, North Rhine-Westphalia, apparently hardware is given out in the communes. Um, and that doesn't really work out. But, uh, what uh, would you say to that? Well, I've, I haven't heard about this, but um, yeah, Soling is not that far from Recklinghausen. So our city did distribute iPads and that did help a bit, but uh, they weren't enough at all. And also it was a one-time initiative and I think it came from some sort of digitalization package. It wasn't enough though. And the schools are now coming to us and said, like, the iPads from the city aren't arriving, or we didn't get as many as we ordered, and so on, and still asking for computers. So, all right, so yeah, the, the typical announcement politics. So, I have a practical question. So, how legally consistent are your uh, data deletion services and are you applying BIOS updates? So BIOS update application we can't do. That is probably technically possible but not worth the effort because the effort is actually quite a lot once you have been handling this many computers. Um, and deleting about the file deletion, this, the, these are not our certificates, they're from professional companies. 
So we only tell them that, that we will override the, the hard drives and please give us the computers free of any data. And for anyone that wants a professional data deletion, we offer that via our system house, which is a free service that they are offering to us from, from Goodwill. And that, that may take a while sometimes. And how data protection conform is that? Well, as professional as a professional system house would do that, you can't really get it better. Um, okay, so how are you treating financial donations if you're not a proper um, nonprofit? So yeah. Monetary donations um, in, in Brunswick, they can do that since they are an actual nonprofit. And, and here in Soling, we aren't. And uh, that's why we can't directly accept monetary donations, but are collaborating with a nonprofit in our area that um, have a filter on their donation account and uh, then pay bills for us. And since many of us are local initiatives and they can decide whether they want to be a non-profit or independent, and then at some points we are looking into maybe founding more non-profits, um, but uh, in Nonprofits. All right. Did you make the experience that towers aren't um, as well received as laptops? Well, yes, that is a thing. A lot of people would rather have a laptop because it's just more practical. Often, I think one notices that many companies um, like uh, the, the old generation of computers are towers and given away. They, they are well received and in, in many families um, it is often even a practical issue about having the space to, and, and often not even Alvichit has its own desk and um, then using the 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 dinner table for all of their tower PCs is not really realistic. But yeah, we, we just give out what we can do. Most of it is still desktops and uh, the, the laptops do go away a bit faster. Then somebody is writing, how did you acquire the donations? So when we're asking the companies, then the companies usually told us that they're looking for hardware themselves at the moment. Um, yeah, here in Brunswick, we really just um, did the, the cold acquisition and just um, really pushed companies a bit and uh, called them multiple times. And um, that that helped and, but then even ex especially once the, the the local newspaper or something uh, gives you a visit and maybe a, a small column then that usually gives you a big push and especially like it, once you have a brand like we do with this old man thing um, that that um, makes companies want to donate more if, if it's a more well-known project and um, especially if the media is involved and uh, then also it's often like local larger companies like banks or something um, that um, do have an association with the local community and uh, want to be involved there. But yeah, you do really have to put some pressure on the companies. Then there are a lot of questions about logistical topics, which I, which I would leave for the Big Blue Button talk later, because we have come to the end of our time slot. But then there's one more question that collects multiple questions again. So this should be an uh, office and an issue for the, the government, and they should do that. And what you're Essentially, you are enabling the government not to do its job properly. 
So, yeah, that is great, but that doesn't help anyone. Especially not the kids. So, yeah, what we are still hoping for uh, our initiative, we hope that we're making ourselves uh, unnecessary and uh, that other initiatives or especially the government will, will pick this job up. But since nothing was happening, we just decided to do it and uh, took over the job. And things are getting better. I am optimistic about this and that the uh, the, the public, the governments will uh, take care of it more. But doing something is better than doing nothing and making the world a bit a better place. Translator's note, I'm not receiving audio from the Herald. <laughs> Apparently was muted. Ah, yes. All right. So I visited another pad to, to, to see who's up next. Suddenly my computer wasn't recording anymore. I'm sorry. The little hiccup there. So in the next hour, there will be a talk about emojis and how they are badly working. Again, um, go to the big blue button with Lucas and Daniel, ask them some more questions. Uh, the link is in the question pad at the very bottom. And in about 18 minutes at 9 p.m., we will continue with the talk about emojis and why they're not working the way they should. Thank you very much. And...